Hello, aspiring nurses. This is Nurse Ed Scholar here. Um, today we're going to be discussing, um, I guess, a crucial aspect of fluid and electrolytes and third spacing. Um, sounds kind of complex, but don't worry. You know, uh, hopefully I'll do a good job by breaking it down step by step. So third spacing, what is it? So imagine the accumulation, so I guess the gathering and isolation of trapped intracellular fluid in certain body spaces um, due to disease or injury. So this trapped fluid um, represents a volume loss and is unavailable for normal physiological processes. So basically that means that the there's been this buildup of this fluid, it's trapped, but it's not used for any good purpose for the body, okay? So the challenge with this is, is that when you're trying to assess the loss of this fluid because it has no physiologic purpose, uh, can be kind of tricky. Um, it may not appear in weight changes or intake and output records. Um, so it makes it a little bit challenging, um, especially with certain uh, health issues. So let's see. So the fluid may be trapped in spaces like the pericardial um, space, pleural space, peritoneal, joint cavities, it can be trapped within the bowel, the abdomen, even soft tissues um, after trauma or burns. So recognizing this uh, accumulation or this third spacing um, is really crucial and it really can impact our um, patients unexpectedly, okay? So if you're finding it so far pretty interesting, don't forget to hit that like button. Um, and so let's keep learning. So now we're going to explore edema, um, which is excessive accumulation. So it's an excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. So think of it as extra fluid that's causing a little bit of swelling. This can happen due to uh, various factors. So it's, an, it's crucial for us as nurses to really understand, you know, what edema is, where to look for it uh, when we're providing effective care. So um, it occurs because of alterations in oncotic pressure hydrostatic pressure, um, capillary permeability, and lymphatic obstruction. And we're going to talk about that in a, in a future uh, video. But think of it as like the balance kind of getting disturbed. And with localized edema, it can result from traumatic injuries, surgeries, um, local inflammatory processes, okay? Now, there is a generalized edema, and it'll be uh, good for you to uh, remember this. It's all called anasarca. So that's a widespread accumulation of fluid throughout the body. And it's often linked to cardiac, um, liver, renal conditions, liver failure. Um, and you're going to be able to tell the difference, you know, where you have just local edema, you know, people talk, you know, you talk, you hear about pedal edema, you know, uh, lower extremity edema, but anasarca would be a large widespread, maybe across the abdomen, you know, it, it's very noticeable. Let's just say it like that, very noticeable. So let's kind of discuss the clinical implications of third spacing and edema. Um, and kind of knowing this, and we kind of talked about it a little bit, 
But I just want to reiterate because this kind of help guides us in providing the best care for our patients. And understanding third spacing is critical, um, crucial because it can lead to changes in assessing intravascular fluid loss, like we said before. The fluid is there, it just doesn't have any physiologic purpose. It's not where it's supposed to be, okay? So we must stay vigilant and um, recognizing that the fluid is trapped and what the patient is going to face, okay? And as of with edema, you know, You'll hear edema a lot, especially lower extremity edema, pedal edema, um, but recognizing um, the causes is key. Um, knowing that, you know, there's their, that's their buildup of excess fluid and how it impacts the person's health. And then also understanding, is this localized or is this generalized? Okay. And so with this, it it's important for us to Make sure that, you know, we are assessing appropriately, documenting appropriately, and then what um, interventions can we do as nurses to manage the edema that's um, occurring in our patients and to ensure that they are receiving the best care possible, okay? So... <laughs> That sums up, you know, wraps up third space in an edema, trying to give you little nuggets, making it easy to um, consume and digest. And, you know, remember that, you know, this knowledge is going to be the cornerstone of your nursing career. So if you found this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, you know, keep learning, keep caring, um, and until next time, happy nursing.